Hey guys, and welcome back. I hope you guys are staying nice and cool because it is certainly hot over here and I have been doing little as possible. In fact, so little that I haven't taken off my canvas walls off my pergola. Initially, it was because it was raining so much that I couldn't take them down. Then I went away to Mexico. I came back, I got busy, and here we are in August and I haven't taken down my canvas walls yet. That is just something I don't do this late in the season. But I need to take them down, and it is about 7.30 at night. The camera's working really well, and so I'm gonna go ahead and take this uh, canvas walls down, so I need to uh, clean it, and also uh, just get it ready for summer, for whatever summer we have left. And I'm also going to be uh, trimming my abutilon. Now, I'm going to put the name of the botanical name here because I am sure to uh, butcher it. But uh, yeah, I'm going to put it right here for you. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Now this canvas wall right here is a canvas wall that I wanted to put a window on it because it faces my home. But the company who created these canvas walls for me is so backlogged that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get it done this year before having to put these back up. But I'm going to do my best to do that so that you can see that. But if not, I'll try again next year. And if you have any questions on this, um, please leave it in the comments below. and it's about 10 o'clock at night but I still need to take off this uh, plastic tarp over here but I'm going to do that in the morning uh, before it 
heats up for the day over here and took off all the covers from all the seating areas I will be washing those and then I will be placing them back on uh, but in the morning as well I will talk to you about this abutilant and why I trimmed it back so severely and my thoughts on this whole plant so don't go away I'm going in I'll see you in a little bit Good morning, everyone. I hope your uh, morning has started off really, really well. Uh, mine did. Um, I've got a lot accomplished last night. And right now, it's about 8 o'clock. And it's, let's see, and the temperature is climbing. It's already 75 degrees. So, I was able to wash all of the uh, pillow tops, uh, covers, and so those are ready to get put back on. But before I do that, I really need to kind of tidy this up a little bit better and kind of wash down this back wall so that these don't feel like they're leaning against something that's not so clean. Um, but let's talk about my beauty line. So can you see how severely back I cut this? Now this, again, is a butylon, and I'll put the botanical name right here for you. But this here is a vigorous grower once established, and it grows like a vine. Now, here's my take on it. Because I cut it severely back, you know, when you do something like that, chances could be that it may not survive. That this is going to survive because there's a lot of stems here that are quite pliable and there's a lot of life still in it. But let's just say hypothetically that I cut something back and it didn't make it. And that's okay too, because everything has a lifespan and everything's going to eventually die. And I'm surprised that this has even survived 12 years this far, especially because the first few years of building this small program at least the, the flooring and everything. I didn't have canvas walls in here. So this has gone through some winters. But if this was planted outside of the shelter, um, this probably would not survive unless it had some protection uh, because these are considered more tropical plants. So I just wanted to share a little bit about the subutilon. And it's it's got beautiful, beautiful flowers. Um, and the chickens love it. Uh, the, they're not harmful to the chickens uh, and they eat the flowers all the time. But yeah, this will survive. I still need to do a little cleanup, uh, dusting and stuff around it, but I just wanna let you know that if it doesn't survive, um, then I'm okay with it. It just means that something new is to come and I probably will not plant it in the ground. I will probably cover the area and then uh, just put a container and then put something that will survive through the winter months and that's evergreen. Because this is actually an evergreen when it is in a protected area. If it's outside of the protected area, it will lose all of its foliage. So just want to let you know that. Wow, that's a really loud plane. Anyway, I got a lot to do, so I'm gonna go ahead and get busy. So I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, but when I installed this corner uh, plastic tarp there was areas that I couldn't actually uh, drill a screw into and this corner just happened to be one of them so what I did in the corners is I just uh, put a nail in it and so that's what I'm trying to take out right now And it's very awkward. Now this uh, plastic tarp is extremely durable. I mean, 
so far I've uh, kind of fell into it with a, a screw and it never even punctured a hole in it. These also, uh, by the way, are fire retardant. So this will not ignite, it will just melt. So anyway, so yeah, that's what I'm doing is trying to just remove these. So this is the hooks that are used to uh, hold up both the plastic tarps as well as the canvas walls. This is all it takes. It's uh, strong enough to hold either one of those. What I like about these is that they blend in with the wood so you don't have to remove them in the summertime. That saves you a step there. Also, uh, you can put like a snap button and install that in both the plastic tarps and the canvas walls, which I have to do that at some point because it will make the process a little faster and quicker. But what I have going on works perfect. It keeps it in place. Uh, having just those little ribbons, it saves money. And it's, you know, it may take a little bit longer process to put up, but overall it's still an easy peasy thing to do. Now you can put snap buttons and install those to the wood as well as the canvas walls and the plastic tarp. That is kind of the ideal situation. It is a two step process. I've been meaning to do that with my canvas walls. I haven't gotten around to doing it. If I do do that this year, I will take you uh, through that journey. But for now, this works. This is what I use. And then uh, you might have already seen, but I just use these little tiny uh, screws here. Let's see if you can see that. To screw in where I can't put a hook in because there's areas that there is no uh, ribbon. So uh, to keep it a little bit more snug to the wall and more insulated, uh, having screws works as well because both the canvas walls and the tarps uh, plastic tarps that is are very very durable and you're not compromising it one bit by screwing something in to hold it in place so just keep that in mind so, okay so now it's just cleanup time I'm gonna put some good music for you and so enjoy the rest of this video and I'll see you at the end <music> area right here uh, gets a little uneven so I'm going to straighten these two just so that nobody trips on it because there is enough of a lip here for somebody to just actually catch their foot so I'm going to fix that and I'm going to be using sand to do that
Oh my gosh, I am done and I am hot. It is actually, oh, almost 100 degrees out today. But I'm done. It looks really great. But let me show you around. Okay, so excuse my bottle, but uh, this is what it looks like. Looks nice and clean. I did put some wood in here just in case the nights cool down and uh, I can do a fire. Uh, let's see, I put a fan, I installed a fan in here so I could make it a little bit more tolerable in the hot weather. Uh, and it feels really good, by the way. Uh, then, of course, I washed the walls and just really gave it a scrub down. I wasn't intending to do this much, but I'm so happy that I did. So that's what it looks like. Okay, you guys, that's going to do it for me for today. It is almost 3 o'clock and it's 100 degrees out. So I'm going to go shower and then I'm going to come back out here and actually enjoy this pergola for just a few minutes because I do have that fan and when it blows on you, it feels really, really good. And I can see that my camera is getting really hot. So I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Bye-bye for now.